fingerprints are saving lives. Without it, they probably just stay home and accept their fate. We are giving them hope. This is PJ. He's part of a charity called Kohisu that is working with a UK-based biometrics company called Simprints, who make fingerprint readers for charities around the world. PJ and a team of doctors and volunteers are scanning prints to create one of the country's first biometric databases. Biometrics as a technology has completely changed our way of thinking. Four thousand miles away in London, that same tech is being used to unlock phones and authorise payments for coffees, groceries, even that sweet and sour chicken you've been craving all day. Regardless of where you are on the planet, our digital world and everything in it, from healthcare and personal banking to airport security and advertising, is being shaped by our physical bodies. Soon our digital identity will be totally synced to our flesh and bone. When you think of biometrics, we think about complicated things like minority report and scanning people in crowds, but we all have the technology in our pockets. Every time you open your phone, it's a biometric print, it's your fingerprint. When you're going to the airport, you get the scans of faces, all with technology like the Samsung phones and iPhones, it's facial recognition, it's everywhere. This is Natalie. She's a tech psychologist living in Barcelona. I am actually a massive sci-fi fan. I love Star Trek, have done since I was a kid. But in all of these sci-fis, not all of them, but many of them, we have this kind of very rosy view of what humanity is capable of. Thank you, Natalie. In Futureville, things indeed are rosy. Take a look at Isabel. She's just moved here. She doesn't need credit cards, ID, or even car keys, because Futureville knows exactly who she is. Welcome, Isabel. You look well rested today. Want to go to your favorite shopping mall? Yes, please, Henry. Shopping is easier than ever. Hi, Isabel. Check out all of these items that fit your size and taste. I'll take all of them. Thank you, Isabel. We've debited your account. Your purchases are waiting in your car. Everything is catered to your needs, especially your health. Welcome, Isabel. We've got a coffee for you. You're about to get tired. Here's your special menu. All dairy and nut dishes have been removed, so every option is safe. Come to Futureville, where life is easy. Futureville is still a little way off. At the moment, we're still experimenting with what biometrics work and what don't. Almost anything that you can measure about a person has probably been proposed as a potential biometric technology, like thumping somebody's head and listening to the acoustical resonances of their cranium, like watermelon thumping and body odor. It's quite a ridiculous list, actually. This is John Dugman. I'm the inventor of iris recognition. The encoding of an iris code from an iris image is a, a very mathematical process. You can represent it as a two-dimensional barcode. So in that respect, it's like DNA. And that is pretty much how all biometrics work. You simply turn a body part into a code that can be read. And the human body is a vast cosmos of untapped signatures waiting to be read, each more secure than the last. Today, the race is on to take these biometrics to the next level, so much so that the US Department of Defense spent 3.5 billion on biometrics between 2007 and 2015. Part of that future is being made throughout the UK. This is Alan Foreman. He and his company, Be Secure, are working on tech that will allow you to use your heartbeat to unlock and start cars. Traditionally, uh, when we logged into PCs or phones, we used pins or passwords, and that is something that you know, what you know. Uh, we moved to fingerprint, to voice, etc., which is something you have. Uh, but the world is now looking beyond that to something that you are. We're using your heartbeat. And that's a very, very, very powerful biometric. I was authenticated within about one heartbeat. Uh, we can see who it is, where they are, and how well they are. The science behind it has been known 
for many, many years in the health sphere where medics have understood that everyone's heartbeat is slightly different. It's only now that in the generation where we can compute things on high volume very quickly and really we've just converted this into the world of consumer electronics. So imagine when you walk up to the car, you touch on the, the screen and it lets you in. You don't need keys, you don't need any other technology on you. You simply touch the glass and it knows who you are. On the other side of the Irish Sea, a lab in Bristol has partnered with an American corporation to experiment with replacing turnstiles on the London Metro with facial recognition. Rather than having to carry a card around and memorise pins, which is quite a lot of trouble, you just simply present your face. This is Professor Smith at the Bristol Robotics Lab. And imagine how useful that would be in the future to be able to use your face as a biometric for anything you want, for buying stuff in shops, for getting money at the bank, for accessing secure regions. It's a potentially powerful technique for removing gates in access to undergrounds or railways. So you can imagine how much benefit that could provide at the rush hour at Victoria Station or somewhere like that. Humans have been using biometrics for centuries. Even your signature is a biometric, but stroke for stroke, they may be the least secure form of personal identification. It wasn't until the 19th century that Will Herschel, a British civil servant in India, used a handprint to seal an official contract. Forty years later, the first fingerprint bureau was established in India, an idea that quickly spread throughout the world. For a century or more, fingerprints were the bedrock of forensic identification. But then tech giants took it out of the lab and into our pockets. Touch ID. Your finger. Until Apple came out with a popular uh, model of the iPhone, people were quite uncomfortable with using biometrics. But somehow, people are getting comfortable with using them. Now we move on almost a generation in the world of technology and people are starting to figure out actually uh, is this a good thing or a bad thing. Today even healthcare systems around the world are using prints to register patients. There are 1.1 billion people worldwide that have no form of official identification such as passport, birth certificate, you know, any sort of government ID which makes them actually invisible in the eyes of the world. This is Alexandra, the co-founder of Synprints, a startup that is using biometrics to help people get access to healthcare. So Synprints is trying to provide this identity um, to people in developing countries that don't have um, these official identification documents. This is one of the great advantages of biometrics. Like other techs, such as the cell phone, fingerprinting is allowing people in poorer communities to leapfrog older tech. What happens is, from his logs, I can tell you already he has five entries, meaning five treatment cycles. The biometric technology is enabling um, a lot of charities and organizations to leapfrog a computer-based system and go straight from a paper-based system to a mobile system. Fingerprint identity had always been something we wondered whether it was possible. We didn't realize the technology actually existed. With the ability to now focus on specific children based on fingerprints. When you talk of uh, how much impact you're having in terms of how many children are healing, you knew where and where it was not happening. Biometrics are touted as the next step in security, the new way to protect ourselves in a digital world. But just like a password can be hacked, so too can our bodies. And if this data is precisely that of its data, then it is at the end of the day ones and zeros, and it's something which can be hacked. And that means if your body can be hacked, we are looking at a very different kind of future. Here in the future, we don't have wallets, but we do have thieves. Using sophisticated microphones, these villains are now stealing the sound of your heartbeat to break into your bank account. Stay vigilant. Keep your beat safe. Has someone scanned and stolen your identity? Are they using it to hack into your world? Here at New Eyes, we have the solution. New Eyes. Identity surgery may cause irreversible damage to your eyes and bring loss of vision, short sightedness, and total blindness. The advantage of biometrics is that they are not forgotten um, like a password or a pin code. 
Of course, on the other hand, you can't get another iris the way you could get another key or another passport. It is worrying that people's biometric data is going into the cloud, and it is worrying that there's a potential for hack, and there has been one or two scenarios where uh, that threat is real. The point is that you are handing over data that you have taken of yourself, which is intimate, and we're doing it willingly. Used carefully and responsibly, this technology could be amazing, and it's very exciting, but we have to be really careful about avoiding its misuse. And if we're not careful, a lot of this technology, as seductive as it is, can rob us of many of these rights that people have spent hundreds of years uh, trying to develop. Whichever path the future takes, biometrics will play a part. Today, though, they are changing lives for the better. It will enable everyone, no matter which circumstances they are born into, to be able to access all the basic services that only a part of the world is now able to. Biometrics as a technology, in whatever facet we apply it to, it's become a grand innovation for us. 